Russia advances at Chasivyar and strikes the Ukrainian capital with ballistic missiles. Ukraine strikes back against oil refineries and with a massive cruise missile attack on the Crimean Peninsula, where, according to the Ukrainians, they have struck several ships. Among those ships struck are landing ships, which in the past on this channel we called a strategic success. But this has somewhat changed because Russia finished an infrastructure project that can actually have a war decisive, a war deciding outcome or a significance in regards to the war overall. But we'll talk about this and about the other events along the front line and in in Moscow in the situation report about the war in Ukraine. Russia says they have arrested all the suspects of the terrorist attack in Moscow. These uh, four suspects were arrested, other persons involved as well. And while they were shown the initial hearing for a sentencing of initial jail time to allow for the investigation to continue, all of the suspects showed sign of torture. So we will will know what we will have to expect from their confessions in the future. Russia at the same time is still insisting that uh, it is um, that it was Ukraine who actually did the terrorist attack while it, pictures were published of the suspects having connected electric wires with batteries to their genitals. So torture was not only done uh, in, in at the beginning when they were arrested, but it continued afterwards. One of the four suspects was even unconscious when he was shown the judge. Meanwhile, the Islamic State has published the body cam footage that clearly shows that they had insider access, that it was Islamic State, and um, there is no more uh, doubt that this was a, an Islamic State attack in regards to real expert. I consulted a lot of expert. I read the publications of expert on the Islamic State and they, they are, their verdict is unanimous. This was a genuine attack by the Islamic State. Obviously, Russia decides differently for political reasons. They intend everything to push now. They do everything to push the blame on Ukraine now, to uh, shift blame from Putin to Ukraine and to gain an opportunity to use this in a political um, in, in a political advantage manner. At the same time, they used the Russians used at least two ballistic missiles on the Crimea on, on the Ukrainian capital Kiev. The target, according to Ukrainian media, has been the SBU, the intelligence agency of the of uh, Ukraine. And here we see damages that were done um, in in on a house here where parts of it have collapsed. The, the Ukrainians claim they shot down two ballistic missiles, that all of them were taken down, that um, which we have here, they, where they claim they shot both down and the damage was just caused by falling debris. Obviously, uh, a bigger weight coming down with several times the speed of sound will do significant damage and the warhead doesn't necessarily ignite just because the missile is being shot down. This was geolocalized right in the center of Kiev here. Whether this was actually a SBU installation is not really clear. Um, at the same time, they, the Ukrainians also published a picture that is supposedly showing a Sircon missile that was shot down. Obviously, as you can see, everything's pixelated to not show the background. I'm I'm not able to confirm that this is supposedly a Sircon, but the claim was that Sircons were probably used by Ukrainians. The Russians claim that they destroyed two Patriot launchers uh, with a hit on the airport. That was one of the targets. I have not seen any confirmations and all the claims that there was an explosion there so far were seemingly from pro-Russia sources. So as of now, it's possible that one got through, but I do not have any proof whatsoever in this regard. At the same time, the Ukrainian strike back with additional um, with additional uh, uh, attacks on on refineries, we see here fire in a refinery, and the interesting part where it is. This was actually done up here in Samara, where we have a distance from the Ukrainian front of up to one thousand nine hundred kilometers, far further than any previous attack has been possible. Whether this was done by a new long-range drone or whether whether it was done with smaller drones uh, that were launched from special forces is unclear as of now. At least when it comes to the first Ghost Phoenix, there is claim that the Ukrainians used them with special forces from inside of Ukraine. Nevertheless, strikes 
continue against the refineries. We have another one here in um, where in Rostov a power plant was hit by the Ukrainians and here we can even see a drone diving into a refinery, hitting it and exploding at that time. So the Ukrainians keep striking the Russian infrastructure target and mostly the Russian oil infrastructure, showing that the claim by the Financial Times that the US said stop this either is not true or is getting ignored by the Ukrainians. At the same time, on the night of Saturday to Sunday, a Russian cruise missile violated the airspace of Poland for 39 seconds. Poland was not able to shoot it down in that short time, but the Russian ambassador was summoned and refused to appear. So, yeah, not, not much we can say to that additionally. Let's switch to the events on the front line on the area north of the Sivieski Donetsk here up here I have not no change whatsoever that can be re recorded so let's switch directly south of the Sivieski Donetsk here at Chersiv Yar the Russians are advancing ever further south of Budanivka they have advanced up to the area close here close to the um town of Chasif Yar. They are now less than or roughly a kilometer away uh, from the outskirts of Chasif Yar and are creeping closer towards it. We have a geolocalization here as well. This was not it. This here is it where we can see that they are now basically in the enter the last forested area right in front of Chasif Yar. Here basically the Russians have now uh, entered this position. At the same time in in accordance with this attack, they also advanced in this area here in the northeast of Ivanivske. Again, Russian mill bloggers are claiming that they captured Ivanivske, but at least as of now, there is no visual proof of this. We do have visual proof, though, of the Russians advancing along that tree line here. This is not updated in the in the map from uh, Deep State, in the pro-Ukrainian map, but the Russians have reached that road here as well. So at this point, this whole tree line is probably under Russian control as well, increasing the pressure on Klishivka and Andrivka. South of Avdivka, the Russians have advanced a little bit south of Tunenke. They basically gained um, the, the area here a little bit south of it. So no, no major change in the control of territory, but a little advance southwest of Tunenke. When it comes to the overall situation to west of Orlivka and Berdichi, I cannot confirm and record any additional changes in the control of the territory in over the last two days. In Marinka, the situation has somewhat changed. Um, the eastern part of Novo Mikhailivka has fallen. We have confirmation here from the pro-Ukrainian side that basically the whole eastern third, maybe now half of the town, is in Russian hands. We see that the pro-Ukrainian map has now taken this as well into account. This part is now in, in Russian hands and the Russian advance roughly to this here, somewhat to the southwest of it as well. There should be this should be the geolocalization. And you, as you can see, here is Novo Mikhailivka. Here is that tree line, which is here. And they are in closely in front of the second tree line. So basically here, not a big change in territory south of Novo Mikhailivka, but still some that can be recorded. And that's the last territorial change that I can record, so we'll not waste our time going through the other areas of the front line if nothing has changed there by visual proof. What has changed though is on the Crimean Peninsula, there was a series of strike with cruise missiles, as you can see here, being recorded from inside um, the uh, occupied territory from the Crimean Peninsula, where cruise missiles have hit. According to the Russian mill blogger of Riba, Riba, there were, was a use of, um, of uh, at least 40 cruise missiles. The Ukrainians, as you can see here, claim that they have hit both those landing ships and um, the damage is unclear as of now. But as we say, Riba confirmed the attack. They said that at least 40 cruise missiles and ADM-160 and Neptune anti-ship missiles were used. So in total, the ADM-160 is a decoy. So in it, it in itself cannot do damage, but it can simulate the radar signature of other flying objects and thus de disperse and oversaturate an air defense of the enemy. The interesting part here is also that Riba writes at least 12 
planes from the Ukrainian side were used in this attack, which gives us another indication of the still existent capabilities of the Ukrainian uh, Air Force at this point. The interesting part is, though, that the damage seems to be somewhat limited. We have pictures here, satellite pictures, and they show some darkening here along the pier. Now, Riba claims only the pier was hit. It's quite possible that the ship was hit here at the site. That dry dock has a fresh scorch mark, but what, uh, what else is happening, what's happening with this ship is unclear. There is no uh, visible uh, tilting to the side of those ships visible, so it's not perfectly clear whether they have been hit at all or how damaged, how heavy the damage is. Obviously, if it, they were damaged, it would be of significance as the Russians also have very limited repair space in this area. Still though, the, um, the oil tank, an oil tank was hit um, uh, uh, oil depot was hit by the Ukrainians that much. We have confirmation, both visual confirmation as well as from the Russian side. At least three tanks were burned down in this regard. Um, there's also the claim that another ship, the Ivan Hurs, was hit. Um, whether that ship was sunk or not, I do not have any proof. So we have claims about a lot of different ships being hit. But as of now, there's not much we can um, we can confirm at this very moment. The interesting part, though, is, and there we come to the overall situation. In the past, when landing ships were hit, I always explained to you that this is a strategic su success for the Ukrainians as they managed to destroy a ship, not only important for potential future landing operations, but also to keep up the supply line, the lines of communication, if the Kerch Bridge is ever being destroyed by the Ukrainians as landing ships are obviously meant to transport heavy stuff and they are capable of using beaches instead of harbors, so increasing the, the volume that can be transported. So in the past, this was of extreme importance. I usually called it a strategic success, so a success that could potentially um, in the long term lead to a success in the war. Obviously, the more of those ships they destroy, the more likely they will be able to seriously inhibit the situation here but the effect of it has been somewhat made smaller because uh, of what we have here and this is a claim by the by the ministry not a claim the british ministry of defense published that the russians have now finished the railroad line between um between Kolos koloski and kamyanka in the past the only railway line to the so-called land bridge that was usable was here across the across the um across the catch bridge as you can see here because this one line up here was too close to the front line to be able to be used and that's this was one of the reasons why the potential for the Ukrainians to reach the Azov Sea would have been so decisive as they would have been able to potentially cut off most of the supply for the Russians in this whole area, especially if at the same time they managed to shut down the Crimean Bridge. Other than that, with a armed force like the Russians, which is mostly dependent on its railway network, even without reaching the Azov Sea, it would have bettered the Ukrainian position along the whole area here if they had just been able to destroy the Crimean bridge but now we have the confirmation that the russians managed to build a new line which is already visible here this is important because this connects the whole land bridge railway line with the russian land with the russian federation so through the occupied territory of donetsk so the, even if the crimean bridge is now being destroyed it will no longer have the same effect it'll save several days in travel time for railroad carts at the same time as well so lightening the burden on the russian infrastructure and obviously this deploying heavy equipment from let's say rostov to mariupol which a heavy equipment that can't drive by itself will be far, far easier than it ha would have been before, where the Russians would have driven around here. They basically save round trip 1,000 miles, 1,600 kilometers, simply by finishing that railroad line. This now will be a huge problem for the Ukrainians. In the past, we talked about that the Ukrainians will have to be pushed back at least to Kurahove to allow the Russians to use that railroad line again. But with the finishing of that new line, this is no longer the big issue for the Russians. The whole railroad line only has three bridges. I checked here. So here is one. There is one um, here. And one is here over a road, seemingly, um, to go back to this line here. 
um, to summarize it. Sorry, here it is. So there is one bridge here, one bridge here over a bigger river and one bridge here over a smaller lake. Now, the Ukrainians will be able to shut down the line by hitting those three bridges. And um, if they use the right tools, maybe ground launch small diameter bomb if they have enough of them, which is obviously the question, will be successful in this. They might use HIMARS for that, even though the HIMARS missiles they have are not appropriate for that task. We've seen that on the Dnipro, how the Ukrainians struggled and how much time it took them to destroy bridges there. But there we are talking about bridges that were just built, where the Russians in theory could even build parts, spare parts, to change the bridges fairly fast. The crossings there aren't that big that you can't build up um, auxiliary bridges fairly fast if the original bridges are destroyed. So while those bridges can be struck, uh, it will not be a comparison to destroying the Crimean Bridge, which would take years or at least a year to rebuild a destroyed part. So the the overall logistic situation has massively improved for the Russians along the whole southern front. That's very bad news for the Ukrainian side. Other than that, we have some more news about troop generation. Russia has uh, postponed the delivery of S-400 systems to the Indian Armed Forces. They were supposed to arrive this year, and by now the new date is 2026. This is a clear result of their own need for air defense systems. The, the reasons for that we've watched in the videos here. Where was it? Um, yeah, in those videos here, we see why the Russians need more air defense systems and can't give it to the Indians as of right now. And Putin has now signed the law that would allow people to look to expunge their criminal records prior to September 2022 if they sign a um, if they sign a contract with the military or if they have been mobilized. But that was it from me for now. Even. Uh, if you like this video despite the bad news, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps with the algorithm. Leave a comment what do you think about the current situation and the developments. And of course, uh, how do you see it's, it's um, the importance of damaging of additional ships? Um, we could argue that um, cutting the land bridge will then again make those landing ships important again. So stri striking them keeps staying important. But leave your comment what do you think about this. And if you're new here, I would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. So you don't miss future videos this channel is only possible because of the support of viewers like you if you like to support the channel you can do so by the means in the description but that was it from me for now thank you for watching and i'll be back